so far we have seen basic block diagram of a switch mode power supply and we have discussed so far up to a transient filtering section different components used in the transient filtering and how the setup looks like next the um, signal is rectified using a diode and this rectified DC voltage is fed into this active PFC section. A general scheme of active PFC section is what I show here. So the rectified DC voltage comes through these through lines. It goes through an inductor and you have a couple of MOSFETs or transistors which is driven by this active PFC control unit. Um, so this is basically working as a, um, in a boost converter uh, configuration you see the inductor there this is then um, fed through a power diode this is usually attached to a heatsink in a couple of seconds I'll show you where it how it looks like in a in really on the board then you have a NTC this rectified voltage is fed through uh, the big capacitors and from here on you have a DC voltage this is a very simple um, representation of uh, active PFC section. Um, both, once again, both these MOSFETs are diodes, uh, MOSFETs are uh, transistors, and the power diode is usually placed on a heatsink. So I already opened up the uh, power supply, which I showed you in part one. So this is how it looks like. I removed the the power cables I just simply cut it off from the uh, plug see here the plug I just removed it from there the first thing is obviously you should also check if the switch is working so this is the switch through which it was connected once this is done you can go for troubleshooting of different section before that I give you a very brief uh, introduction to different sections of this uh, board uh, or power supply unit so the input is uh, coming through this uh, wires. Then you have uh, the uh, MOV. This MOV is actually, let me place it like that, it's better. So the MOV is here. Then you have a fuse. Then the um, um, inductors and the capacitor, the Y capacitors. So you have two, two different, um, two, two pairs of these uh, inductor and capacitor in this. The cheaper one may not have uh, two of them. They might have only one or they might even skip this. Then you have once again, this Y capacitor. It's uh, actually designated as, uh, you can see CY3. And that's the same here. You can see that it's uh, CX1 l of 1 cx2 and so on and so forth like i showed in this uh, general scheme yeah so so that's the um, uh, input section and then you have this uh, bulk diode bridge rectifier after the transient section so this is this bridge rectifier and you have also one more capacitor after that which is uh, pretty difficult to see you can see the ceramic one the in between the heatsink and the big black box and I just turned around the board so that you can easily see things hopefully let me see yeah so you have this uh, big inductor this is uh, this inductor that I mentioned and then you have a couple of uh, MOSFETs these two are the PFC MOSFETs I showed here and this is the power diode that I showed here and you have your bulk capacitor and the NTC. So this is uh, 
part of the active PFC section. Then you have two switching transistors, which is also mounted to the heatsink. Sorry, it should be a MOSFET. Um, so between these two blocks in between is you have what, what you have is the switching section. So this whole thing is the switching section. And in the end, you also you have the output section consisting of um, some inductors, a couple of capacitors to filter the signal. You once again have uh, the output diodes, which takes care of the rectification. So this is this is the basic. Um, it's a very basic uh, power supply unit used in uh, used for powering computer um, PCs. So this is the main transformer which uh, delivers the power to the output. Um, so let's uh, start looking at um, for obvious troubles in the board. Usually the most of the time the failures uh, you see quite often is uh, in the um, capacitors either in the input section or on the output. If they are blown away, you would normally see a bulge on the surf surface of them or you can see for some burn marks in on the components. You should also turn around and see if for obvious burn marks, which I actually don't see. Um, the next thing then is to start looking at the continuity of this uh, fuse. So if something is wrong at the input section, when you have a short circuit or when it draws too much current, more than it is supposed to, then this fuse is blown away. You should check the continuity of this fuse. Um, then go, now this section uh, where you have the transient filtering, normally nothing can go wrong. Then the next step is to check the diodes, um, the driver MOSFETs, the output diode, and the switching transistors. Let's do it step by step. Um, <clears throat> let me turn the board and uh, let's uh, look at the traces of uh, the board. So I just flipped the board and um, I don't see anything burnt or I don't see any broken traces. It looks like uh, the components on the back side are more or less intact. Um, so what I can say here is um, you see a very nice separation between the high, high voltage side and the low voltage side. So this is the low voltage side. You see the big solder layers with uh, the output wires. Um, the input is uh, basically coming from, let me see the side, so it's actually coming from, from here, so this is the input, and this is the first fuse belonging to the transient filtering section. Then you have uh, the inductors and the capacitors, um, and this is the... Um, this is the final Y capacitor. So this is uh, connected to capacitors connected in series and the midpoint is connected to the ground through this uh, point, which is connected to the chases. Um, and here is the bridge rectifier. You see the four leads, one, two, three, four. And the uh, output is this one. We have the DC output here. Then it goes through this uh, big inductor. It's in the back, you can see this black one and uh, the big capacitor is here. Uh, the first uh, MOSFETs are connected to the heat sink or actually these two. You see the three pins, that's the first MOSFET and the second one is the second MOSFET. So their um, gate is driven by some gate diode, uh, gate resistors. Um, let's start by looking at the continuity between the fuse lines to see if the fuse is blown away or not. So the fuse is uh, between these two. Sorry. So 
the base fuse is uh, soldered between these two lines. Let me see, let me take a multimeter and show you if we can measure the continuity there. So I put it in a continuity mode. So I have a continuity here. Let me see if we can do both with my hand. Let's check the continuity here. Sorry for that. I have to hold my mobile and also the pins. I'll have to make a pass and then check for the continuity. Okay, so there is no continuity here, so the fuse is blown away. Um, the next step then is um, to check further because it doesn't make sense to just change this fuse. Because if this fuse is blown away, something is wrong. Um, either in this section or in the PFC section. As I mentioned before, not much can happen in this region except for this MOV, um, which I did check as well and I don't see any problem. So something is wrong in this section. It could be that one of these MOSFETs is blown away or both, or we have problem with the power diode if there is a short circuit or the bulk capacitor itself um, observing a short circuit in the diodes or uh, sorry in the capacitor is very rare but nevertheless we should check that as well let me um, check um, one more possibility is um, you get the rectified DC voltage through a bridge rectifier so if you have a short circuit in the bridge rectifier, initial bridge rectifier, this one, then um, then you, you can also blow the fuse, initial fuse of the input. Um, to check the next section, you should start with checking the diode. So the diode output is between these two pins. Let me see if I can connect these two pins here. Yes, so you see a short circuit between the output pins of the initial bridge rectifier. Um, <clears throat> then the obvious step would be to remove this diode and check for the continuity. Since um, the section is more or less ending the bulk capacitor I wouldn't just remove the diode first but I would come from the back side I would try to remove these uh, MOSFETs I would remove one of them and see for short circuit and uh, if one of them is blown away um, you should also re remove the other one and also change both these MOSFETs um, with a equivalent MOSFET um, the other possibility is this um, Skutki diode, power diode, which might also be short-circuited. But um, let's remove one of these uh, MOSFETs. I'll try to desolder it and show you if uh, one of them is blown away. So if, until here, if you don't see any problem, then it's obviously the uh, uh, rectified diode is burnt away or is short-circuited. Let me try to desolder the MOSFET and come back to you. I just realized that it's not easy to remove um, these uh, um, MOSFETs because it's connected to a heatsink. These two MOSFETs, which is responsible for the active PFC section. Um, and there are screws which are connected to the heatsink. Normally before desoldering these MOSFETs, it's uh, better to remove them from the heatsink and then desolder it because it's, this has a huge thermal capacity. So you'll have to put a lot of power into it before you can really desolder it. 
So to remove the screws, it's not easy because you have this uh, inductor. So I would remove this inductor um, and uh, remove the screws of these MOSFETs, remove it from the heatsink and then try to desolder it. But let me just remove this inductor first, then the first MOSFET and let's check for um, short circuit in this uh, section. So I'll be back in a second. So I did manage to remove um, the two MOSFETs from the PFC section and also the choke or the uh, inductor. So these are, you can see here, the two MOSFETs sockets and the inductor which was connected to these two lines. So I removed it. So this is the big inductor. That's uh, this initial inductor and I removed these two MOSFETs, this one, and I found that it's a general MOSFET SGF280N6W3. So it's a um, 600 volt um, N-channel MOSFET. And um, I in fact checked the continuity between uh, different terminals. So the first one is the gate, drain and the source. Um, and as expected one of them is blown away there is a short circuit between the drain and the source of the second MOSFET um, as I mentioned before it's better to remove um, both of them and when you replace it's better to remove uh, replace both of them uh, with the new ones because you don't know how good is the second one because one of them was short circuited and these are in parallel conditions where they're connected in parallel so if one of them was short-circuited the other one took the load as well so it might have been stressed more than it should have it should have been so i would recommend uh, replacing these two mosfets uh, then i would put back this uh, inductor and um, see if we still see some short circuit so obviously i did once again um, measure the continuity between these two terminals there are no more um, there is no short circuit anymore. So this is obviously from one of these MOSFETs and I did check the capacitor as well this NTC If this NTC was uh, blown away normally you would see a burn mark or uh, Yeah Broken pieces which uh, you don't obviously see on this NTC. So I don't think that the NTC is uh, um, Damaged of course you can also measure the resistance between them which i did as well and the diode the power diode also seems to be intact it's difficult for me to show both the measurements and also hold the camera in hand i'm sorry for that so <clears throat> um, i'll just uh, go ahead and replace these two mosfets with uh, some mosfets that i have here so I, I don't have exactly the same MOSFET, but I have a MOSFET from Infineon C6, uh, 600 volt, 650 volt breakdown voltage, and um, I think RDS is around 0.28 or 0.3 milliohms. So I'll go ahead and replace it and uh, try to turn on the power and see if uh, the circuit is working, working on that. I guess that uh, we only have problems um, in this section after replacing. I'll do some measurements, uh, voltage measurements. Um, if this works, then I would go ahead and uh, check the output. If that works, then um, we are quite lucky that we found out the um, obvious uh, problems so soon. I'll be back in a second after replacing the MOSFETs. So I went ahead and uh, replaced um, these two MOSFETs. Uh, with the uh, Infineon chip, like I mentioned before, uh, Infineon MOSFET, and I put this inductor as well back. Um, you can see the new solder on the inductor terminals and also on the MOSFETs, first and the second MOSFET. Um, I did once again double check for further short circuits across the diode terminal, across uh, the MOSFET 
and across this uh, bulk capacitor once again to be sure on the same safe side um, let me turn let me power it up and check if uh, things are working or not so I did change a couple of things um, I exchanged the MOSFETs here it's on the back side um, I exchanged this fuse you can see I put some heat shrink on that connected the power cables input cables and um, I did check for some more short circuits further which I didn't see so um, I'll go ahead and turn on the power um, please be careful normally it's better to connect a, a load in series a bulb or something like that in series just in case if there is a short circuit um, that would prevent something um, bad happening really bad happening so I'll just go ahead and turn on the power switch okay I can see that the fan is spinning let me show you as you can see the 12 volt um, fan which is connected to this circuit here is uh, running um, which means in principle the power supply is working I did check the voltage um, at, uh, different voltages they all seem to be constant I also tried to connect a load and see if uh, it delivers the required current which uh, I don't show now but in general what I did is I just um, replaced these two MOSFETs uh, because there is a voltage no power so these two MOSFETs that you see here um, I replaced them I put back this um, inductor um, I replaced this fuse and that's it um, that's what you can basically do or that's what I basically did to make it work so it was this um, these two components um, so around five dollars five euros for the two MOSFETs and ten cents for the fuse so less than six euros um, I was able to fix this nice power supply which I could use for the printers that I mentioned before um, so we were lucky so we did not have to go further into the switching section and also on the output section where we did not see any obvious problem 